Everybody's heard of Albuquerque, but I don't think their sports venues are quite as well known. So let's check out the stadiums and arenas of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Tingley Coliseum. In case you're wondering about the name, it's named after former governor Clyde Tingley. Tingley is a real surname apparently. As is the case with quite a few older arenas in the US, this was originally built as an equestrian and rodeo venue. They started building it in 1940, but it didn't open until 1957. I know there was a rather large war in the meantime, but that's still a very long delay. This place has been home to various teams of the hockey, basketball, and indoor football variety over the years. But they have either ceased to exist or moved to more modern arenas elsewhere in the city. Which is understandable because Tingley Coliseum does have a few shortcomings including the pillars that obstruct some spectators' view, which hasn't really been commonplace at indoor arenas for like 50 years. Nusenda Community Stadium is the preeminent high school football stadium in the city. It belongs to the APS, Albuquerque Public Schools, so several schools use it. The field is sunken, the stands are built into the earth, and due to the fact that there's no seating beyond each end zone, there are these strange concrete sections that look as though they're made for spectators to sit or stand on, but that would be incredibly unsafe. The spectators can watch from the concourse up top though. It is a pretty cool little stadium. Oh, and maybe the locals can answer this. Are these part of some sort of flood mitigation system? Because they look like primitive caveman stadiums. I can envisage games of rock ball being played in them. I do love me some rock ball. The only thing I don't like about rock ball is that they use a rock for a ball. The Pit. Another arena, another peculiar name. This was originally known as University Arena. Boring, I know. But it was nicknamed The Pit and that nickname stuck. It's a large basketball arena but from outside, it barely rises more than 20 feet above street level. Because it too is sunken into the ground. Hence, the pit. So unless you're sitting up in the mezzanine level, you'll be walking down to your seats. That sunken design saves them a bit on air conditioning costs, and it was presumably cheaper to build in the first place. The arena is known for being one of the loudest going round, and that is helped along by the steep seating and low-ish ceiling. That low ceiling might be partially why there's no center hong video board, but I don't think fans care too much about that. Seems like a great place to watch a game, even if you do have to crane your neck ever so slightly to watch a replay. University Stadium. Yeah, they couldn't come up with a clever nickname for the football stadium. They stuck with a boring one. I'm gonna borrow a line from myself, the last time this stadium was featured on the channel, whilst also paraphrasing Homer Simpson. The people of Albuquerque might enjoy flavours like mesquite grilled onions, jalapeno relish, and mango lime salsa, but this stadium more closely resembles British cuisine. It is quite beige and simple. So perhaps this place could go from University Stadium to the pie, or the pasty, or the Greg sausage and bean melt. To be fair, that beigeness does perfectly reflect the desert environment in which it's located. And inside there are a few quirks, most notably this strange section of seating beyond the southern end zone, and the fact that it's attached to the school's athletic stadium. I also appreciate the pockets of greenery here and there. I have to mention the beautiful Carlisle Gymnasium, which is now the Elizabeth Water Center for Dance. It opened way back in 1928 and was home to Lobos basketball for about 30 years is now listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Isotopes Park. I already referenced that episode of The Simpsons earlier on, but when Albuquerque gained a new minor league team, the locals got to vote for the name and what do you know? The Albuquerque Isotopes did come into reality after all. Homer may have won the battle, but Howard K. Duff VIII won the war. In actuality, this team relocated from Calgary, Canada. Albuquerque's previous team had only left three years prior, 
This ballpark was in fact built on the site of the previous team stadium. It incorporated some of the pre-existing structures, but most of what you see now was newly built, including the cartoonish exterior and the statues of the Simpsons family minus Maggie. She presumably perished in the New Mexico heat. If you are unlike Maggie and can handle the heat, there are plenty of fine spots to sit out in the sun. Oh, and this place is also home to New Mexico United, a professional soccer team as you probably already noticed from the aerial shots. Rio Rancho Event Center is located so far out of town that you have to get there on a horse with no name. Although alongside the stadium the Rio Rancho City Hall was built. In fact the entire project was called the City Center Project. So I guess the city will eventually expand out here. One of the teams that plays here is called the Duke City Gladiators. I was curious about that name and it turns out that Duke City or Duke City in American is a nickname for Albuquerque because Albuquerque was named after the 10th Duke of Albuquerque. They got rid of one of the R's in the American version. It's more efficient you see. That's why Albuquerque, New Mexico has grown into a thriving metropolis whilst Albuquerque in Spain is still a small town. Oh, uh, uh, n nice arena. I like the way it is. And those were the stadiums of Albuquerque. Thanks for watching, have a good one.